Maryland community is still waiting for answers this morning following the catastrophic Francis Key Scott Bridge collapse yesterday. Yeah, officials are looking for all six workers who are presumed dead right now. A power outage on the cargo ship is to believe believed to have what caused the ship to crash into the bridge. And joining us right now is Associate Professor of Civil Engineering at Quinnipiac University, Ari Perez. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so first question here. Looking at a situation like this, seeing that video of the bridge coming down, one of the th first things that comes to most people's minds is, is it possible, could this have been prevented? Well, it could have by the ship not crashing into the bridge, but, but once a ship that large was crashing into the bridge, the collapse was <coughs> maybe not a sure thing, but a very likely outcome. All right, now looking at the collapse from a technical aspect, you know, people often see a cargo ship in question how could it have made such an impact on a big bridge like that one? So we are wondering, what are the basic safety mechanisms on bridges and how much of an impact can they handle? Well, so that's a great question. This all goes back to the kind of loading and the demands that you would expect to be placed on a bridge. You know, when you design a bridge, you really analyze the bridge's behavior based on the range of loading that you see forecoming, right? So like three tractor tailors, you know, 18 wheelers, buses full of people, but all of those vertical loads, which impact the bridge just kind of pushing down on it. An impact like this very large cargo ship applying a lateral load, that is very difficult to foresee. Um, the kind of loading that that ship put on the bridge is very similar to a wind load or to an earthquake load. It's just not something that structures are really designed to withstand. Adding to this, the, the impact of, of the ship was humongous, right? Like the bigger, heavier something is, the more force it will apply. And, and so when you have such a large force being applied to a bridge in a completely unexpected way, like really, you know, failure is, is one of the natural consequences. One of the ways I was thinking is I, I really like football. And, you know, I went to the University of South Carolina a few years ago. Jadavian Clowney was drafted number one. If that guy is coming at me and running to tackle mm -hmm. me, there's little I can do. He's just too big. Right. Now, we all watched that video of the bridge coming down. It is, is jaw-dropping. It is jarring. I think a lot of people naturally wonder if that could happen to us, if it could happen here on one of our main bridges, like the Pearl Harbor Memorial Bridge or the Gold Star Memorial. And are they even the same type of bridges? Right. So, you know, the bridge that collapsed was a trust bridge. That is a very common type of bridge, and we really have a lot of them around the state. Uh, as to whether this could happen, uh, you know, this is a freak accident. Uh, if a ship this size impacts a bridge, it is very likely to happen. Again, no, no real bridge is designed to, to withstand this kind of impact. It would really have to depend on the safety measures that are being placed on, on ship navigation and, and the size of ships themselves. The bigger the ship, the bigger the impact. I would say, just to put this in, in perspective, I was looking at other cases, and it seems to me like the only large case of a bridge failing because of a ship hit happened in Tampa in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And so if you have two incidents over roughly a 50 year period, it is not very likely that these things will happen in our state. Uh, what kind of changes to policy moving forward do you think you we may see happen and we might see change to prevent something like this from happening? You know, that is very likely a lot of big changes in policy and civil engineering are directly tied to disasters. If we look at, for instance, dam safety, that was really spurred on by the Grand Teton Dam failure in Idaho in the 1970s. And so it is possible that we will see policy change. I would say if we do, it should really be related to safety with ships not colliding with bridges once the collision happens. It is just too expensive to, to design every bridge to withstand that kind of load. You know, you will really, bridges are already very expensive, weighty, mm -hmm. complicated, complex structures. And, and to add an extra layer of safety, just for a very rare occurrence doesn't really make sense in an engineering point of view. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure that, you know, ship navigation and, and power system redundancy, it seems like that was the cause of, of the collision. Maybe those will be looked at. Right. Hopefully you find out more about exactly what happened yeah. on that ship leading up to this. Ari Perez, thank you so much for joining us from Quinnipiac University. We do appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you all so much for having me. Have a great day. You thank too you. as well.